the Guarda Cathedral stands in the historical center of that which is known as the highest city in Portugal, reaching in its topmost location an altitude of 3,465 feet. The city was founded on November 27, 1199, through a charter granted by King Sancho I of Portugal. At the beginning of the 13th century, the Diocese of Isitania was transferred to Guarda. This diocese, whose origins date back to the 6th century, was based in Idanha Velha, a once important location that suffered a stagnation in its development in the 12th century. Founded in the 1st century AD during the Roman occupation, Idanha Velha was known as Civitas Igetitanorum, a designation from which the name it would receive during the Suebi and Visigoth presence comes from Igitania. With the transfer of the bishopric, the name remained, which is why the terms Egitanu or Egitanias are used to designate both those who are born or live in Guarda and Idanha Velha. The north portal has a pointed arch with four archivolts, the inner one supported by columns featuring capitals with stylized plant motifs, and the outermost one forming an ogee, topped with a fleur-de-lis with six pestles. The whole is framed by an ornamented gable, inserted into an alfiche flanked by pillars. Over the portal we can see the coats of arms of Portugal and of Gonçalo Vasco da Cunha, Bishop of Guarda between 1397 and 1426. The original Guarda Cathedral, which was probably built at the beginning of the 13th century in the Romanesque style, had small dimensions, making it too cramped for an expanding community. Thus, in 1230, King Sancho II ordered the construction of a new temple located outside the city's walls, close to the blacksmith's tower, in the vicinity of the current Misericordia church. This option corresponded to a moment of great development in the suburb of Guarda, indicating that an important part of the population had preferred to live outside the walled area. However, the change in the political and military context during the second half of the 14th century led King Ferdinand I to order the demolition of that cathedral in 1369, as it would be to expose if a Castilian invasion occurred. The cult was temporarily moved to the Church of Our Lady of the Market, now disappeared, while the new cathedral was built inside the city's walled enclosure. Nonetheless, Ferdinand I would die before being able to carry out this project. It would therefore be up to King John I of Portugal to grant permission for the construction of the new temple, in a process initiated by Bishop Frei Vasco de Lomego, and which would begin in 1390. On the corner of both towers, there are two prominent shields, representing the coat of arms of Pedro Vasco de Vial, who was Bishop of Guarda between 1496 and 1516. The main portal, in Manueline style, has a three-centered arch with intertwined crockets on the inner side, and is topped by a niche with a corbel and baldachin where the image of Our Lady of the Assumption stands. It has an empty niche on each side, and the thin outer colonnette is extended, forming an OG arch over the image of the Virgin, decorated with crockets. The portal is flanked by two Solomonic columns, chopped with crockets with fleurons. The main façade, facing west and constricted by the two robust towers, has a primitive angular gable finish and features a circular oculus and two narrow slits. The construction of this third Guarda Cathedral, the building that we can still visit and appreciate today, would span over 150 years, involving several architects and artists.
As there is no official record of this information, the possibility has been raised that the initial project was authored by Master Afonso Domingues, who was, at the time, managing the construction of the Batalha Monastery. The construction of this cathedral began with the nave, apse and portal on the north side, with the latter showing some stylistic similarities with the south portal of the Batalha Monastery. The facades of the cathedral are topped with a rope-shaped frieze, crowned by decorative battlements cut in the shape of stylized flowers, complemented by suggestive gargoyles around the entire perimeter. Like the Batalha Monastery, this temple uses Gothic flying buttresses that free the surface of the side walls from their support function, allowing the opening of several windows. This type of buttress, used for the first time in Portugal at the Alcobaça Monastery, is topped by pinnacles ornamented with fleur-de-lis, a decorative expression that we also find at the Batalha Monastery. In the apse chapel on the epistle side there is a small, simple-looking portal with a pointed arch and three archivolts. The interior ones are supported by protruding imposts and the exterior ones by columns with capitals decorated with foliage. This ensemble is topped by the coat of arms of Luis de Guerre, who led the Diocese of Guarda between 1427 and 1458 and which appears off-center in relation to the axis outlined by the portal. This wealth of ornamentation becomes particularly impressive when you consider that, unlike the usual limestone used in Gothic architecture, the Guarda Cathedral was built in granite. Nevertheless, it simultaneously presents an overall fortified appearance, typical of the medieval era, thanks to its powerful octagonal towers, standing on quadrangular bases and with round arched windows, and to its stylized battlements. In the 16th century, between 1504 and 1516, the management of the worksite was handed over to Masters Peru and Philippe Henriques, sons of the notable Master Matheus Fernandes, responsible for the unfinished chapels of the Batalha Monastery. Overall, the Guarda Cathedral represents one of the most important monuments of the late Gothic style in Portugal, although its stylistic richness does not end there. Throughout its extensive construction process, which took place approximately between 1390 and 1540, this cathedral became a cluster of various artistic styles that mark the transition between the Middle Ages and the Renaissance. The interior of the Guarda Cathedral has a Latin cross floor plan with a very pronounced transept and is structured in three staggered naves, the central one being wider and taller. The naves are divided into five bays, forming round arcades resting on tall columns with smooth shafts and capitals decorated with phytomorphic motifs. In the last two bays, the half columns attached to it have impressive spiral shafts, with the area of the church's apse comprising three polygonal chapels. The baptistry is located to the left of the entrance, at the base of one of the towers, in a chapel with a polygonal floor plan and a ribbed vault. It features a hemispherical font protected by a wooden lid. There was once an important pipe organ located in the first arch of the central nave, on the left side, created in 1749 by Bent Fontanj de Makesha, at the request of Bishop Bernard de Melvazori. This organ had a gilded wood box supported by a white corbel. It had a counter-curved tribune and a balustrade. It was extensively decorated with masks and putti in the Baroque style. The instrument would be tragically dismantled and removed in 1921 during the cathedral's restoration work, which aimed to remove all elements considered as being non-medieval.
The majestic central nave is covered with ribbed groin vaults and illuminated by windows with mullions opened above the full arches dividing the naves, forming a clear story. Four columns are attached to the pillars, from which the transverse arches, which are pointed, and the wall ribs emerge. The side naves are also covered with ogival rib vaults. The floor of this cathedral contains a total of 134 tombs, spanning five centuries of the city's important figures, from men and women of the nobility to canons and bishops. In the nave on the gospel side stands the Chapel of the Pinot, which is accessed through a three-centered arch Renaissance portal with two archivolts resting on columns decorated with cherubs and plant motifs. It was founded in the mid-16th century by Juan de Pina, treasurer of the Guarda Cathedral, who is buried inside in a tomb with a recumbent effigy sculpted on the lid. An inscription in Latin appears on the Arcosolium surrounding the tomb. As the deer searches for water sources, so my soul searches for you, O God. At the top, we can see the founder's coat of arms. The chapel is covered by a beautiful stellar vault, which has bosses decorated with phytomorphic elements, with the coat of arms of the Pina family represented in the central one. Also on the Gospel side is the Chapel of the Irons, which features a Renaissance portal in the round arch surmounted by a triangular pediment supported by Doric pilasters. This chapel, which is also known as Chapel of the Osorius or of Our Lady of Annunciation, was founded by Luís de Abreu Castel Branco and Francisca Pina, his wife, at the end of the 16th century. It is covered by a stellar vault and has, on the floor, the tombs of its founders. It features a 16th century altarpiece attributed to the sculptor Diogo Jacques. It represents the Annunciation of the Archangel Gabriel to the Virgin Mary. It was carved from incense stone, a type of soft limestone with a light and uniform color, which was widely used by sculptors from the 15th century onwards. In the side names there are five shallow chapels in the Mannerist style, three on the Epistle side and two on the Gospel side. They all have similar characteristics. They form round arched openings resting on Tuscan pilasters surrounded by another pair of pilasters of the same order resting on cuboid plinths supporting a triangular pediment decorated with a rosette. The appointment of Pedro Vaz Gaviau in 1496 to the Diocese of Guarda corresponded to a moment in which the construction work on the cathedral advanced at a remarkable pace. Pedro was chief chaplain to King Manuel I of Portugal, being a remarkable figure who was invited by the monarch to accompany him to Castile and Aragon in 1498 and to Santiago de Compostela in 1502. In 1507 he was appointed to the position of main prior of the monastery of Santa Cruz in Coimbra, where he ordered the construction of the current church, the Manueline Cloister, the chapter house, and the tombs of kings Afonso Henrix and Sancho I. His importance as Bishop of Guarda in the process of building the cathedral of this city is remembered by the presence of his coat of arms on the corners of the towers, on the walls and colonnades, and even on the keystone of the chancel's vault. The church's transept has two deep arms, each of which is divided into two sections by fasciculated pillars and covered by ogival ribbed vaults. In the centre, the crossing is elevated being higher than the central nave and the transept naves. 
It has four round windows that illuminate the interior, forming a structure reminiscent of the roof lanterns of Romanesque cathedrals. It is covered by a spectacular stellar vault, featuring the cross of the Order of Christ on the keystone. In all the vaults of this cathedral you can see beautiful bosses decorated with plant or heraldic elements. On the floor, on the right arm of the transept, we can see the tomb of Jean Lopspina, noble knight of the royal house, born in Guarda, who died in 1566. In the south arm of the transept there is an altar, carved in ancient limestone, dedicated to Our Lady of Lourdes. On the wall, above this, the coat of arms of Pedro Varge Gavion appears. The apse chapel on the epistle side is consecrated to the Blessed Sacrament. It has a ribbed vault, being illuminated through two windows opened in the apse's outer wall. It has an altarpiece in ancient limestone carved in the 1920s by the sculptor Jean Machard, which features bas-reliefs of the Last Supper and the Four Evangelists and is topped by a tracery platband. In this chapel is the tomb of Jerónimo Rogado de Carvalhal y Silva, Bishop of Guarda between 1775 and 1797, whose coat of arms is depicted on the left wall. On the vault's keystone, as well as on the right wall of this chapel of the Blessed Sacrament, the coat of arms of Luis de Guerre, who was Bishop of Guarda from 1427 to 1458, is represented. The triumphal arch, which precedes the chancel, is pointed, with five finely carved archivolts supported by slender columns with capitals decorated with plant motifs. Inside the chancel stand the Baroque choir stalls created in the 18th century, composed of two rows of facing chairs, the upper one topped by a backrest decorated with pilasters, frieze, cornice and golden phytomorphic elements. The chancel's vault, ogival, ribbed and with the keystone formed by a huge suspended pine cone, impresses with its verticality, having the same height as the vault in the central nave. Here we can find the wonderful high altar, commissioned by Bishop Cristóvão de Castro around 1553, which is attributed to the workshop of Jean de Rouen, one of the greatest sculptors of the Renaissance in Portugal. Carved in ancient limestone, it has a concave layout and consists of six floors divided into panels by Doric pillars and Corinthian columns. On the lower level, the Twelve Apostles are represented, just above the images of Ezekiel, Moses, Elijah and Daniel, along with the scenes of the Annunciation on the left and the Nativity on the right. The next level has sculptures of Isaiah, David, Jeremiah and Zechariah, which appear between representations of the Adoration on the left, of the Virgin of the Assumption flanked by angels in the middle and the presentation of Jesus in the Temple on the right side. The section above has representations of the procession to Calvary on the left, the Calvary in the middle and the descent from the cross on the right. At the top there is a pediment with the image of God the Father flanked by cherubs. At the end of the 19th century, the architect Rosim Carvalera visited this cathedral and drew attention to its state of preservation. He was behind a restoration campaign that would last until June 1921. This intervention followed a perspective in which the new should not be distinguished from the old. The consolidation carried out prevented the collapse of the cathedral, but the removed elements, such as part of the choir stalls and the Baroque organ, were forever lost. Climbing to the roof of the cathedral, which also gives access to the terraces on the side naves, allows magnificent views over the city and to appreciate some architectural elements up close, such as the towers, gargoyles and flying buttresses. 
The Guarda Cathedral has been classified as a national monument since 1907, standing as one of the most important examples of the monumentality of late Gothic architecture in Portugal. Thank you for discovering Portugal with us. If you liked the video, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel to follow our new releases.